Good morning. Welcome to the video lectures of economics, 11th class. Today we are going to focus about chapter number one, introduction. In this chapter, we are going to cover introduction of economics and its importance. And we are also going to focus about economic activities and importance of statistics. So, from the very starting, from the very beginning, we start from the introduction of economics. The science of economics is not very old. Its origin can be traced to 1776, when Adam Smith's book, An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of Wealth of Nation, was published. The word economics itself has derived from the Greek word, which is a combination of two words, that is oikos plus nemin which means to manage household. Initially, or in earlier time periods, economics was used to be understood as a process or a science which is used to manage household only. Then, different economists have given different, different definitions of economics and basically they are broadly divided into four parts. The first one is wealth definition by Adam Smith, welfare definition by Alfred Marshall, scarcity definition by Robbins and the last one is growth oriented definition by Simulson. So now we are going to explain each and every definition. The first one is wealth definition. It is economics is the science of wealth and Adam Smith was of the view that it refers to those goods which satisfy human wants. So it was given by Adam Smith who is also known as the father of economics. Now, the second definition is given by Marshall and the definition is known by the name of welfare definition. It believes that economics is the study of a man in the ordinary business of life. And according to Marshall, the primary object and end of economics is the promotion of material welfare which is part of human welfare. Then again we are having another definition and the most fundamental definition of economics that is scarcity definition. It believes that it is the science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and the scarce means which have alternative uses. Now the most important point here is Scarcity is the root cause of economic problem or scarcity definition of economics is based upon following fundamental characteristics of human existence. These fundamental characteristics are unlimited wants, limited resources and alternative uses. Before explaining each and every point in detail, I would like to give you one simple example. I think each and every one of us have heard the story of Aladdin and magic lamp. Definitely, in this particular story, Aladdin was the most luckiest person. Why? Because he was having a magic lamp. The things or the demands or the wants, whichever were made by Aladdin, he just used to rub that magic lamp and a genie would come and would fulfill all his wishes. But in reality, it is not possible because in reality we all don't have the magic lamp of Aladdin. Rather, in our real life we have to satisfy our own wants by our own means. So here we are going to explain each and every point in full detail. The first one is unlimited wants. As the name indicates, wants of the people are increasing day by day. They are unlimited. If one day we satisfy our one want, in another day multiplicity of another wants emerge. For example, few years back, there was demand of TVs only. Later on, it shifted to the demands of LCDs. Now, it has again turned a shift towards the demand of LEDs. So that means our wants are increasing day by day. The second point is limited resources. Obviously, we know that the means to satisfy these wants are limited. For example, if you get a pocket money of 500 rupees per month, that means these 500 rupees are limited. You have to satisfy your unlimited wants by using these limited 500 rupees. Now, 
The third important point is alternative uses. What is the meaning of alternative uses? Alternative uses simply means that that particular 500 rupees can be spent in buying books, they can be spent in buying a gift, they can be spent in giving a party. So that means these three are the root cause of economics that is basically related to scarcity, unlimited wants, limited resources and alternative uses. Now the next definition is growth oriented definition of economics. It believes that economics is the study of how men and society choose with or without the use of money to employ scarce productive resources which could have alternative uses to produce various commodities over time and distribute them for consumption now and in the future among various people and the group of the society. And now in nutshell or in conclusion economics is the study of how people and society choose to employ scarce resources that could have alternative uses in order to produce various commodities that satisfy their unlimited wants and to distribute them for consumption among various persons and groups in the society. No doubt this definition is quite lengthy so it can be explained in simple language. So in simple language is, it would be economics is the study of how unlimited wants can be satisfied with limited resources and these resources are having alternative uses in such a manner that producer is getting maximum profit and consumer is getting maximum satisfaction. So now we are going to talk about another important aspect of this particular chapter that is economic and non-economic activities. There is no sphere in any, any person's life which cannot be touched by economic and non-economic activities. We all use various activities and we all perform various activities in our real life. They can be broadly divided into two parts, economic and non-economic. The first one is economic activities. As the name indicates, it refers to those activities which are undertaken to earn a living. For example, workers working in a factory, they will be termed as performing economic activity. The next part of this is elaboration of each and every activity. They can be divided into consumption, production, exchange and distribution. The first one is consumption. As the name indicates, the term consumption is quite common. We all use this term in our real life, but it is an economic activity. How? Because it deals with the use of goods and services for the satisfaction of human wants. For example, if I am eating a bread, that means I am consuming bread. If the person is drinking milk, that means he is consuming milk. The next activity is production. As the name indicates, it is the process which is undertaken to produce goods and services for generation of income and satisfying human wants. It is the process of converting raw material into finished goods, land, labor, capital and entrepreneur these are four factors of production which are combined and are helpful in producing various goods and commodities in our society. The next one is distribution. It is one of the most important economic activity because it is concerned with how income is distributed among factors of production and we already know what are those factors of production? They are land, labor, capital and entrepreneur. It is concerned with how total income is distributed to the land, labor, capital and entrepreneur 
in the form of rent, wages, interest and profit. So, in nutshell, we can revise or recall all the topics which we have already done. We have talked about the meaning of economics, which means economics is the study of mankind in which unlimited wants can be satisfied by using limited resources in such a manner which are having alternative uses so that they can satisfy consumers as well as producers in the society. Then we talked about four main definitions of economics given by Marshall, Adam Smith, then we talk about Robbins and Simelson's definition. Then our focus would shifted to towards two types of activities which were economic activities and non-economic activities. In economic activities, we try to explain what is the meaning of consumption, what is the meaning of production, what is the meaning of distribution. Then we talked about all these kind of activities and their importance in our real life. Now, in next module, we are going to talk about statistics and its importance in economics. Statistics play a very important role in our life and moreover, statistics is a very crucial aspect and part of economics. So, in this next module, we are going to focus about the meaning of statistics in singular term in plural term, we are going to focus about characteristics of statistics, we are going to focus about features as well as their importance in our real life and the limitations of statistics must be covered in this chapter too. So in the meanwhile, thank you and enjoy reading.